What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Lex P. And it's your girl, Dre Nicole. And you are tuned in to another episode of Poor Minds. Where a drunk mind speaks sober thoughts. Ooh, we back with another solo dolo. I had to stand up. Why? I was too low. You was getting too comfy. Mm-hmm. I know y'all like, Lex, what you, what's going on with all this hair? Look, I'm not getting my hair done right now. I have just had a wild, wild, wild time. So mm-hmm. what's up been up with you, girl? You got the stomach out. You all fine. You looking real cutie patootie. Thanks, girl. This is like, I like this color. I don't know what is it. Is it like, um, it's not teal. It's lighter than teal. It's um, like, um... I don't even know. I don't I don't know what color that is. I don't know what... Aqua? Aqua. Okay. Well, I feel like aqua is more of like a deeper blue, though. Yeah. Like, you know, like the color of the ocean. I don't know, but I like it. Yeah, it looks good. Thank you. It looks real good on you. You look nice, too. Yeah, you know, I have to do Your a little... Hat. Match the dress. It do perfectly. Mm-hmm. I haven't worn this hat in a very long time. Shout out to 85 South. I'm always stealing stuff, you know. Uh, but yeah, make sure y'all get y'all a little bucket. It's real cute. I'm ready. I'm so glad we're like in sundress season. Me too. It's so easy. Like just put on a nice little sundress, cute little flip flops, mm-hmm. nice little purse to match. And you out the door. And we outside. Quick beat, quick one, two. You know, I thrive. Or no beat. Or no beat. You know what I'm saying? So uh, what else has been new with you, homegirl? Girl, I've been staying busy, and I've yeah. been trying to get back in my routine yeah. too, cause you I feel like I fell off of my routine. Okay, like you're not work. like completely fell off, yeah. but like I had a really good morning routine, mm-hmm. workout regimen going. going. Yeah, I need to get back on my shit. What made you fall off? My birthday. Mm. Bitch, it's Ooh, been like six, it been it's been six months. I'm just playing. Um, but no, I feel you. I'm, you know me. I, when I start working out, I'll go hardcore for, like, two, three weeks, and I'll be like, eh, I don't feel like going today. And then I'll mm-hmm. just, like, won't go for, like, a month. So yeah. I'm still struggling with it. So I ain't judging you. I ain't yeah. judging you. All right? Um, so you want to get into these topics, homegirl? Mm-hmm. I am actually excited to talk about this first topic. Okay. Because one thing I will say that I love that we do on this show is we try to identify the type of people that we are. And one thing I want to get back to is making dating fun again. Mm -hmm. Everybody complains about the dating scene, including me, you know what I'm saying? But I feel like if we identify the type of person that we are, like our, what we did um, a few weeks ago, the attachment dating styles that we have Mm -hmm. and the type of dater we are, Dating may be easier for you because now we're going to identify, like, the type of dater that you are. So if you're this type of dater, you need to attract this same type of person. Mm -hmm. All right? So we're going to get into the dating styles today. So the first type of dating style, now this is modern dating now. There's five types of modern dating styles. And I got this from the love guru on TikTok. Mm-hmm. So shout out to him. Thank you. This definitely made sense for me. So the first one that he said is the commitment data. This is the person, like, first date, they looking for they, they person. They're like, oh, I want marriage, I want kids, or I want a lifelong commitment. Like, they are dating for a purpose. Mm. Like, they want something, and it's commitment. And they're very straight up. Literally, on the first date, they're like, oh, how many kids do you want? Do you believe in marriage? So how do you feel about the commitment daters? That's scary. I'm going to block you. <gasps> you will block a commitment Hell date? yeah. Why the hell what, Why the hell is we talking about that on the first day? But some people do that, but I feel like... I feel like a lot of people do that. Mm-hmm. That's a little scary to me, though, because you pressing me. You don't even know if I'm the type. You don't even know if I'm your type. Right. To get married, to be with. Like, because even though you're a commitment dater and you want to get married, we might not even be compatible like that. Right. So why are we even talking about this on the first day? I feel, like, I feel like after we like a few days in, then yeah. Maybe we you can know, have that conversation. What, what are you looking for in a relationship? And right. I'm going to tell you what I'm looking for. Because now we're a few days in, so we're obviously very... We like each we other. We like each other. Right. I'm not going to even say connected to each other. But yeah, we like each other enough that we went on a few days. Mm-hmm. On the first date, off the rip, a nigga asking me... Do I want to get married? Do I want to get married? How many, How many kids? kids I want to have? That's a lot. That's a bit much. Because we don't even know if we're going to have a second day. Because mm-hmm. I might go shoot. Mm. Okay. I feel like this. I agree with you. Is that one you. of the dating styles? What, ghosting? Yeah. No. Mm. It's not one of the dating styles. But it kind of little 
We'll talk about it when mm-hmm. we get to the next one. But I feel like this with commitment daters. Now, don't get it twisted. I feel like now I'm dating with purpose. Intent. Intentions. Like, I'm dating, like, I because I do want something. But on the first date... Second day, I'm still kind of filling you out. Yeah, I feel like being a being an intentional dater is very important once you get to a certain point in life, and especially once you know what you want. But you gotta be intentional with people that you really can build something with. Right. I'm not I don't lie. know on the first date if I can build something with you. To even get past like the getting my number stage, you've already passed a little a few tests already. So if we're on the first date, I'm still not gonna ask you, you know, what like, are you trying to get married or you want kids? But I'll probably ask you what your intentions are. Well, I feel you know? like that's what a first date is. You're mm-hmm. supposed to be getting to know each other. Yeah. You're supposed... To me, on a first date, it's like an icebreaker. Yeah, it's the icebreaker. Like, we're getting to know each other. Be easy. It's very lighthearted. It's mm-hmm. supposed to be fun. Right. Eventually... We'll get to that. We'll get to all of that. I just... I don't know. So, the commitment daters... You don't scare me away. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Commitment daters need to wait till at least date three to ask the commitment questions. Do you feel like? I don't even think it's a number. I don't think it's a necessary number that you should wait for. I just feel like until you feel... Like, okay, I like this person. I comfortable, can see but it needs to be after y'all have already had a few encounters. Mm-hmm. On the first date is crazy to me. Like, you too pressed. Yeah, you too pressed. You pressed. Yeah. And it seems like to me, I don't want to... And if you that pressed, why you ain't found nobody? But not only that... I feel like sometimes commitment daters can come off as, like, they don't care who they with. They just want to be with somebody. Like, they don't care who they marry. They just want to be married. And that's what I'm saying. So why you ain't married since you would be with anybody? You know why? Because anybody don't want you. Okay. Something wrong. Now, see, you ain't have to take it there. I ain't, we ain't even, it ain't, uh-uh. Maybe commitment daters need to find each other. But I know, for one, I am not a commitment dater. Mm-hmm. Um... I th- I date like I said I date with intention but as far as like being like oh but no I'm not doing that okay mm. so dating style number two serially monogamous dater now this is the person where they're like you know what I've had a lot of relationships and you know they may end but I'll just start another one but they usually be with one person at a time a year two three years that shit ends they like I don't care I'm gonna do it again. And so they just be serially with different people one at a time. I think I'm kind of like this in a little, like a little bit. Not like, you know, necessarily one at a time, but I deal with people for a long time. I do. I do. Like, and I'd be like, you know what? This didn't work out, but I'll start something with somebody again. So I'm a little bit of a serial monogamous dater, a little bit. Mm-hmm. Now, sometimes in the middle of the serial monogamy, I might find me another one and break <laughs> that one off. But, break him uh, off way. Real bad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to break him off real bad. But um, so, yeah, the serial monogamy dater are the people that ne- necessarily you're not in a committed relationship, but you like <laughs> to just deal with. I'm sorry. I got to laugh because Greg was over there like. Because I'm going to break him off real bad. I'm going I'm to I'm break him off real bad. Uh, yeah. So the oh second God. one, I feel like a lot of women tend to do this just because we don't mean to. Let me tell you why. This is the type of woman where they're picky. Even the type of man may be picky, too, because you necessarily don't want to be in a relationship, but you found this person that you like, and everybody else just ends up falling out Mm -hmm. in the background. We tend to do that. You tend to do that. Yes, you do. Like, you'll like a nigga. What I do? Like, you'll like a man, and even though y'all not in a relationship, everybody else just kind of, like, in the background, but this is your, like, main dude that you like. Mm -hmm. We all accidentally do that, whether we know it or not. That's why I said I'm a little bit of a serially monogamous dater because I be accidentally in a relationship but I'm not in a relationship Mm -hmm. because I don't like these other niggas I like you you my man my man my man most women are like this when I think of serial monogamy I think of somebody who is actually really in a relationship well I take it as either or like you can be in a relationship like you're a person like I'm a relationship girl literally always have a boyfriend but also even when I don't have a boyfriend I'll be dealing with one nigga that I really like. I'll maybe have other niggas texting me and hanging out, but I have my dude that I really like. Mm-hmm. And like I said, I feel like most women are naturally like that. Mm-hmm. Y'all not really like that, though. You don't think so? 
No. I think when I you mean, like somebody, you like, you be having niggas text you and be like, you know, a little one, two. But you be like, yeah, you drop everything and you're going to go to him. I don't know. I disagree. This okay. happened like two times. Okay. Three times, two or three times in my life. And, and I'm 32. And it was not given monogamous? I mean, it was like... What is monogamy to you? Because to me, monogamous is doing anything, like you're not doing anything that you can't tell your partner about. That's what monogamy is to me. Okay, that's fair. And I have liked niggas to where it's like, I'm really fucking with you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But I'm going to still go on this date and I probably ain't going to tell you about right. it. Right, because they would get mad. They would get upset. It would change And I know dynamic. it's wrong. Mm. Not that it's wrong because we're not together, but I know that if I told you, your you would be mad. Would be hurt, or you would feel, yes, you would feel some type of way. And then I don't want to tell you too because then if I tell you, then I don't want you thinking you could do that shit because if you do that shit... I'm going to be mad. I'm going to be gone. You know the reason a lot of times I feel like when you're casually dating somebody but you don't tell them what you're doing because you don't want to change the dynamic of I'm the relationship. I'm very much a, if I do, it's cool when I do it, but when you do it, you got me fucked up. Because I do it in a controlled <laughs> space. <laughs> you niggas don't be controlling yourself. I will go on a date and talk to a guy and go home. Yeah. You niggas will oh yeah, you so fine girl. Let me take you home. And me, 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 me. And y'all don't know how to just and go on a date. Coochie. Yeah, you eating coochie. You are eating coochie. And You're... kissed you the next day. <sighs> that be happening, too. Oh, think about it. That doesn't happen to us before, but we ain't know. Mm. You you probably was like, why is breath smell like that? I, I, I hope not. <laughs> I would be devastated. That's why you got to date niggas with beards. You can always sniff around in that beard a little bit. See if it, she left some traces. Bitch, if I looked at a nigga beard and I felt like it was a trace... <sighs> oh. You're crazy. No, you gotta sniff around. But then what you gonna Let do? Let me smell your Okay, dick. okay, your beard smell like coochie. Now what? I'm leaving. And, and, and reenact this for me. What's gonna happen next? Let me, let me smell. Let me smell your beard. Oh hell, hell no, nigga. I'm kidding. Let me get my shit. I'm finna get my shit. Like Angela Bassett said. I'm burning up everything. It's giving way to herself. I would laugh at you if you did that. Why? If I was a nigga, I'd be like, girl, get the fuck on. And he's gonna be like, damn, bitch, we just went on two dates. <laughs> I thought we was in love. No, if I smelled the nigga beard and it smelled like coochie, I was spazzed. Oh my God. I don't know what's the spazzing. That was not spazzing. Let me get my sh get your shit. <laughs> I wanna be gone. Go to bed. I'm just saying. No, I would really spaz. I, I don't saying. even know how to. I don't even know how to act how I would act because I know I would. I know I would fuck some shit up. You know what's crazy though? I don't even think I would spaz. I, I would. think I would just be like, "This is what it is." Coochie got a distinct smell. I like it. <laughs> distinct. I like a little. Okay, I'm not. You know you like it when a nigga eat your coochie and come kiss you. Yeah, but I don't want you to eat nobody else's coochie. I know. Come kiss me in the mouth. That's what I'm, I'm agreeing with you, but I'm just saying, like, that's know. a lot of audacity for you to know that your beard got you coochie didn't stench <laughs> and you came and kissed me. You yeah. ain't even wash it. Yeah. That's crazy. You really don't care. Because you know what? I'm not even going to act mad. You, you know what I'm going to do? You do not respect me. You got to get him back, though. You got to let a nigga <laughs> nut, on your, <laughs> nut on your titties and let him suck your nipple. You know that nut be drying a little clear. He can't see it. And then when he get done <laughs> sucking, it just, peel, it just peel it off. Got your bitch ass, nigga. Yeah. That sound it. like you did it before. I'll peel it off real slow and dangle it like this. You like that? Tastes real <laughs> good, don't it? Yeah. We Lex, did. you're crazy. I've never had no nut on me that I could peel off. I don't think I've had. <laughs> like, what type of nut you be having? <laughs> That's that AI nut. <laughs> I'm just saying, I don't you know. Why peel it? That's not peeling, real. You know, you know when the nut dry? I don't know if it can peel off, but it be, you know, it dries. You don't clear. wipe nut when it get on you. I mean, you let it dry. Bitch, you acting like you ain't never nutted and stuff and just kind of passed out and you wake up in the middle of the night and then you wipe no, it. No, I got to wipe it off. I Immediately? Like it. I like to bask it a little bit, like. I love feeling real rich, nigga. 
Okay, it's strict in this motherfucker. God damn. Okay, so I don't know how we got you to that wipe topic. Rub it in. Oh, I love a good rubbing. But just peel, that's how I rubbed but it but in. But to peel it off, I feel like it just stayed there. That's because you stay in there to get him back. You gotta be like, you let the nigga nut on you and you rub it in so it'll stay there so you can let the other nigga suck on your titty because you done kissed his coochie beard. Eye for an eye, hoe ass nigga. I really feel like you're a sick bitch. And it's a lot of other bitches out there that sick like that too. Because, bitch, I ain't never in my life thought about letting a nigga nut on my titty, <laughs> rubbing it in so another nigga could suck my nipple. I've never done that before. I'm just saying in case you want to get back. That's a real detailed thought. I think when niggas eat coochie and then they don't wash their face and come kiss you, I don't really think that they, like, was like, oh yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. Ooh, yeah. That's what I'm gonna... That's what... <laughs> <laughs> this Poor Minds episode is sponsored by BetterHelp. What's up, y'all? It's your girl, XP. And it's your girl, Dre and Nicole. And y'all know we talk about therapy so much and how it has gotten us through some of the darkest times in our life. Yes, for sure. And you know, when you're a giving person, sometimes it's so easy to forget about taking care of yourself. Mm -hmm. And that's what I love about BetterHelp because it gives me a time every week where I could take time to myself, talk to my therapist, and just vent and get an unbiased opinion about a lot of things that's going on in my life. And also what makes it super easy is that I don't even have to leave the comfort of my home. I can talk to my therapist from my house and it's super convenient, super easy, and it works with my schedule. Yes. Finding a therapist, y'all, is like finding a man. It's hard. So the thing about BetterHelp that I personally love is they make it easy to switch your therapist if you don't like them. They don't charge you extra to switch up, nothing like that. So what we have done is partnered with them so you get a discount. So what you're going to do is go to www.betterhelp.com backslash poor mind to get 10% off of your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com backslash poor minds. I'm telling you, if you've thought about therapy, but you've never gone through with it, this is your sign to start it today. been asking and we gave it to y'all we coming to la we coming to la june 17th at regent theater doors open at 8 p.m show starts at 9 p.m please be on time Dater. The more the merrier dater. Now, this is kind of you too. This is like the person, they're not necessarily fucking. I hate when we oh. say dating because people always, but no, this is the person like, hey, I'm having fun. I'm mm. outside. I can juggle two, three, four, five people. I'm having a good time. Like, the more the merrier. I go out with you to eat. I go out with you because you're going to take me out the country. I fuck with you because you may pay my bills. I fuck with you because you give me good dick. Like, it's the more the merrier. Cool. I can't really do that, though. I Having multiple niggas stress me out. I don't like... You niggas is annoying. To have more than, like, three, four niggas... Like, maybe if like, you're single, you can juggle cool. two. It sound cool in theory. And I could do that shit for, like, a month. Yeah. After a month, I be stressed. It be just too much keeping up with all of that. I told... I called a nigga, another nigga name one time. While y'all was fucking? Yeah. Luckily, Europe. they had the same name. That's why you got to call everybody <laughs> babe. Babe! Babe! You don't ever get that confused. You're a whore. Luckily, they had the same name. What but, was their name? Because, you know, it's like I was thinking about the other one. What was their name, I, Eugene? I was like, bitch, I ain't never in my you life. You look like it was like you were sharing niggas named Eugene. Eugene! Bitch, you the one that be fucking with senior citizens. And, and I do it again. You be fucking with niggas who First got of all, AARP cards. No, uh I got me a good, nice tenderoni. I don't like old niggas. And a nigga named Eugene ain't never got this coochie. You strict. Now, a nigga named... Hmm. Can't say it. Okay. I got, it was close, though. So you're not... 
you're not a, a, a more than merrier dater. It's hard for me. Like, okay. I've tried. I've tried. That's why I said me. you're a serially monogamous. Duh. I, I don't feel like you've said mine yet. Okay. Well, <laughs> you, okay. Well, we gonna move on to the next one. I'm definitely not a uh, more than merrier dater. No. Niggas get on my nerves. I don't nerves. think I'm any of those. Okay, so we gonna go to the next one. Okay. The hookup dater. That ain't me neither. I want to fuck. I want to fuck some. I'm trying to get my dick wet. I'm trying to get my coochie scratched. They don't give a fuck about feelings. They just want to have sex. They will literally get on a dating app and be like, hey, meet me at the bathroom. It's going down right now. Mm -hmm. Complete stranger. They just want to fuck. Mm -hmm. Period. Those are hookup daters. That's not me neither. That is definitely not me. Yeah. Like, I have to know you. Like, I'm a more emotional, sexual type Niggas of person. Niggas dick don't be good enough to be a hookup dater. Facts. Because you gonna be fucking a lot of niggas and be very disappointed. Very disappointed. I don't, for if, I'm not really a risk taker when it come to dick. Me I neither. like fucking niggas who I know that dick gonna hit. Right. Like, I know. To me. And I don't ever be wrong for real. And I don't like to, you know, judge people. You know, we're not judging people, but for hey, a no, woman... No, 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 we're not judging. For a woman to be a hookup dater, you're extremely horny. And you probably need to figure out Get what's going on. Get that coochie scratch. I mean, no, you need to figure out what's going on. Because why are you... As a woman, men really don't be making us orgasm like that. Unless it's... That's why I said, if you are a hookup dater as a woman, you're going to be very disappointed a lot. But there's I... some of them out there. Yeah, and I really do not be lying when I say this. I have not really just had no terrible dick in my life. Oh, I have. I haven't. Maybe one time. And like in my 20s, I definitely have. Maybe one time I could think of where I was like, wow, this shit trash. This, this is ass. The older I get. But other than that, I'm good at picking them. Mm-hmm. When I tell... <laughs> but that's why I can't be a hookup dater, because I got to feel the vibe. Like, the I got to I gotta be like, I know. How do you tell, like, Ray Charles? You be feeling the wrist? Yeah. What the wrist tell that's you? That's why you knew. That's why. Because that's what Ray Charles do. He was like this. Yeah. I know that pussy hitting. Oh, yeah. That's what I be doing, too. I yeah. got a woman. <laughs> Way over time. Okay, let's move on. Good to me. Why are you rubbing oh, my titty? That's what Ray did. <laughs> I'm just showing you what the nigga did. Because that's what I would do. <laughs> He was on to something. He was. He was. But how many kids? He had a lot of kids. He had a lot of kids. And a lot of bitches. Mm. Anyways, he had a lot of women over Okay, time. so no hookup dating. I don't mm -hmm. I'm, I don't judge, but I don't condone that. Uh, I just think I'm too old for that. It's um, not my fourth. I'm not pressed for dick like that either. Like, it's easy to get dick, whatever. Okay, so the last one is the predator dater. No, I'm not none of these. You're maybe more a hybrid, of a, maybe a hybrid of that's the first what I feel like two. I, no, well, the first three. I think you're a hybrid of two and three. Serially monogamous, and the more the merrier. You're a little bit of mix of both. Because the predator dater is crazy. So the predator dater is not what y'all think it is. The predator dater is somebody who is like they're dating because they're looking for something. They need a place to live. They need their bills paid. This is male or female. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, a lot of times niggas be fucking with the girls because they need a place to live. They need a place to stay. They want a job. They need to drive your car. The predator dater is not looking for love. They're not looking for sex. They're looking for something that they need. Mm. And y'all gonna be like, who it does that? It's a lot of people out there that are predator daters. They looking to get saved, mm -hmm. taken care of. You know what I'm saying? Um, would I say I was a predator dater in my younger years? Possibly. Possibly. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't been on, and I'm not saying I necessarily fuck somebody, but I definitely been on dates with men. I just knew they was going like, oh man, come out with me. You can take off work. I'm gonna give you some money. And I'm like, I don't even like this nigga, but I know he gonna give me some money. So let me just go eat with him. Yeah, I so did he can that have before. me take off. You know, yeah. So I feel like that's a technically a predator dater. I did you that know? when I was younger. Yeah. So I think we've all been there, especially as women, because um, men. Especially a certain type of man, they just want to throw their money at you and throw their money at you. Shit, I'ma take it. If you throwing it, why wouldn't I catch you? Mm -hmm. So I feel like, for me personally, I identify with this is modern dating styles. I identify with being a serially monogamous dater. Like, okay, more so. And so I think, yeah, I'm a hybrid of serial monogamy mm -hmm. and the more the merrier. Mm. I'm here for a good time. <laughs> Not, Not a long time. time. All right, so uh, we finna get into this drink because this is a real motherfucking tasty. Mm -hmm. I'm a little tipsy. 
Ty. Yes. What you got us on today? So this is that voodoo juice. Ooh, okay. We, ooh, my man got. Okay. I know this was just for you because you ooh, you got, got the voodoo. voodoo. She been on her man, her man. So this is perfect for that. She gonna take ooh, it home, spell. put some more of that voodoo on them later on. Okay. This mm. for you, Lex. She's mm. Lex. <laughs> So for this one, we use some vodka or tequila. Lex, I am not your nigga. Let her finish. <laughs> she moaning again? No, she licked her tongue out at me. <laughs> it's the voodoo. <laughs> so this one has either vodka or tequila. Okay. We have some uh, peach syrup. <laughs> we have some lime juice. And then we have a little bit of cherry juice in there, too. You know, like that cherry juice you had when you was at church as a kid? Mm -hmm. It's a little bit of that. So it gives a little sweet tartness to it. Mm -hmm. And then we garnish it with a maraschino cherry and a lime. So nice refreshing for the spring, summer. It's real good. It's giving vibes. Mm -hmm. I like that. Cheers. Mm. I like and that. Speaking, do it again. And speaking of what, queen, I want you to stop licking your tongue out like that. What is wrong with you? <laughs> that shit funny. Imagine if you was on a date with a nigga, he was like this. <laughs> I actually been on a date with a nigga, he did that. Shut the fuck up. I swear to God. Shut the fuck up. I no, he swear did not. I said to God. What? Why would I lie on God? That's the type of bitch you with. <laughs> hey, I just swore to God. And I said, Lord, please forgive me. I just didn't need that nigga to know. No, I swear. Okay, so what he We were sitting across the, the table from each other. Okay. And he was like. <laughs> and did you like it? He, he did the two fingers, too. I said, oh, <laughs> you nasty. Did you like it? No. Oh, okay. I went home. Mm. I don't know who coochie you about to eat, but it ain't mine. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I like. What's it called again? The voodoo juice. It mm. ain't mine, Mookie. Mm. So, speaking of voodoo juice, I wanted to kind of talk about that. I wanted to talk about manifestation. Okay. I know we talk about manifesting and manifestation a lot yes. on Poor Minds. And, you know, people have been saying that manifestation is not really that much different from witchcraft. Yes. You agree? I a uh, thousand percent agree. With your, because I think it depends on your intentions as well. Okay. Okay, how? Because I feel like manifesting, like, putting out into the universe that this is what I want, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. this is what I see for my life. Right, right. Um, I'm willing to do the work mm -hmm, to get there, mm -hmm. but this is my goal. And this is what I'm praying for to, to God. Yes. Because you got to say who you praying hello. to. Hello, come on now. Right. So, well, let me say Jesus. I mean, so they say you can't. They say if you say God, they don't you know which God. Specific. Yeah. So Jesus Christ. So if you praying for what you want and you're trying to manifest it and you're willing to do the work, I don't see how that's really witchcraft. To me, witchcraft is like when people be doing spells and shit mm -hmm. or like lighting candles. Okay. So this is. I don't know. I'm gonna offend where, some people. No, I mean we probably are candles. gonna uh, offend people with this. I don't need some candles too, though. A lot of times, people have to realize. Um, a lot of people look at Christianity as a form of something weird and yeah. strange and different because we're praying to somebody that we've never seen, and so you know you gotta put that fact out there. But for me, so when I manifest things. I never manifest things on other people or other things. I manifest things for me. Mm. I say, this is what I want. Maybe I'll probably manifest things for you too because we have a business together. So I talk about poor minds, you know. I'll say things for my friends, yes, but it's always me speaking good and praying for them. And, you know, in the morning when I say my manifestations in the mirror because I'm always speaking positivity into myself. Mm. So for me, I wouldn't necessarily look look at that as witchcraft or voodoo, but I look at that as just me speaking life into myself. Hey, Clay. Um, But now once you get into the territory of, now I be seeing people be like, oh, you want your man to text you? You want your ex back? Say this three times and manifest this man. When you're speaking things to try to have power over somebody to do something that they normally don't want to do, that's when, to me, that's when you start to get a little witchcraft But that's not, but that's not manifesting, though. That is manifesting to some people. Like, manifestation is a big umbrella, though. So I have seen people who are like, you know, relationship gurus, and they literally say, oh, you want to hear from... Literally, that's a thing on TikTok. It's a thing. 
Like, people will tell you, oh, do you want your significant other that you broke up with to text you? You have to manifest that. So this is what you're going to do. You're going to go to the mirror and say, oh, imagine him in your mind texting you and you text him back. And then you're going to say, oh, I miss... Or they just be saying crazy things. So to me, once you start doing that, you getting into some witchcraft voodoo type shit. Because you're trying to make somebody do something that... They don't want to do. If I have to say something in the mirror and light a candle and do all this shit to make a man text me, I don't want you to text me that bad, bitch. I'm not manifesting anybody to do something but myself. Mm -hmm. So I do feel like manifestation can get into the the realm of witchcraft and voodoo because I don't want no but nigga. I don't, that's why I'm saying I don't really feel like that's manifestation anymore. I feel like it's a spell, kind of. I mean, but you're still speaking things into existence. That's why I said manifestation is a big I just be trying to figure umbrella. out why do people want people to do shit that they don't want to do? Because people... That's weird. I don't want no nigga that don't want me. Hello. If you I don't want no friend nigga. that don't want to be my friend. I don't want no money that ain't attracted to me. Mm-hmm. Because all money ain't good money. People don't talk about that type of shit either. Like, you can get money, but how did you get it? Mm, did I you get it in the right way? way? Yeah. Mm. I remember. Ugh. So... <laughs> Like, <laughs> amen, amen, so, amen. So yeah, but like for real, all money ain't good yeah, money. Like, I how agree. did you? That's what uh, that's what Ronnie said. No, that's what what's her name? Diamond Make said. No, Diamond said that on the playlist. Yeah, she, she told said. Ebony. She said all money ain't good money. So how you make yours? Mm. Period. She said I just that came here to word. dance. That's it. That I just came word. here to dance. Cause for that's real though. It. But for real though, like everybody. Sometimes bad juju be coming with that money. I'm telling you. That's why bad juju be coming with them niggas too. Like, I be feeling like people be, God be sending people signs of like, the pebble. This person do not be need to be in your life. Mm -hmm. You do not need to be in this situation no more. But people be wanting to be in these situations and be around these people so bad mm -hmm. to the point that it's like you end up in a real fucked up predicament. You end up in a real fucked up situation because God was trying to tell you this is not for you. I'm trying to get you up out of this, but you want to stay there. And then guess what? And then these be the same people who cry wolf and want to play victim all the time. But baby, you had 50 million times to leave. To leave. And then so well, guess what? When you start praying that this situation will work out and you start being like, oh, this is the person. I feel like if you pray enough, though, if you ask for something enough, you the gonna get gonna it. Need what you want? Yeah, but bitch, that, but it might not be not what you want. But look, that ain't God. Yeah, that ain't God. That's what I be saying. Words are powerful because That's if you, why I didn't if say God, God is I telling the universe. you this person not for you, but you steady praying or manifesting this person, you gonna get that person. But that ain't God answering your prayer. It's witchcraft. Mm -hmm. It's the voodoo. Words are fucking powerful. Yeah, you better be very specific. And you gonna be miserable eventually. Because it's is. just not for you. Mm. You can't expect nothing to be blessed that wasn't meant for you. Mm -hmm. And God don't bless no mess now. He don't. But yeah. So I, I just... I don't know. I ain't gonna weird. lie. I don't know. I don't no. know. I don't know. <laughs> I, I did... So at one point, like... And which I still am into, like, energy and manifesting mm -hmm. and crystals and all of that stuff. But I remember at one point I was reading this book and it was like about candles and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So I had lit a candle one time and that's when I knew I was down bad. I said, you hoes crazy. I ain't doing this shit no more. I don't like to get too deep. I lit it. It knocked over. It fell. Uh-uh. I don't like that. Please, I swear to God. Just give me feels. the Jesus with the Virgin Mary that died on the cross. That's all I want. Don't send me no extra uh, deities, no goddess. I don't want none of that shit. Keep <laughs> no, that no shit way. away from me. Satan, keep this shit away from I me don't and want, my family. Keep that shit away from me and my family now. That's why I say I... I, I just feel like that shit be getting too deep it to gets me. Way too deep Cause to it's me. like to me also for you to like do all of that, you don't really believe in him. Hello? Cause he told me my path. And I'm for I look, look, I take the good. I feel like if you do too much of that, you then you trying to deter from you, your path. I'm telling you, that's of, when of you start knocking on you. somebody else though now. Yeah. The devil was an angel. He know how to disguise himself now. <laughs> okay. All right. You got a hey. good point. Preach, preach. Hello now. I don't look, I don't let P in the peaceful preacher. Hey, I done been to the other side now. I'm telling y'all, I know some. 
I know so. No, for real. I'm telling you, I swear, I when I lit that candle, it knocked it like in like an hour, it knocked over. You let something in that wasn't supposed to be there. I'm serious. I'm I know. Who you let in? What you was praying for? What you lit the candle can't, for? I can't tell you all that. Yeah, I don't want to know, bitch. Don't bring them spirits over here, <laughs> bitch. I'm a saved woman. I don't care what y'all think about me. <laughs> I'm blessed and anointed. Baby, don't bring that shit over here. Yeah, it was a wild time, but yeah, I just think that's I think that's getting a little too deep. Like, I, okay. but I do believe in manifesting as far as like speaking into life into yourself, li speaking life into yourself, praying for what you mm -hmm. want, speaking mm -hmm. it into existence, writing down your goals, writing it in your journal, yes. praying over it. Yes, I believe in all of that, but I think sometimes when it, when it start getting into making all somebody that fall in love, and with you when it get or... into magic, that's a little different. Like, if you got to take some hairs and cross it and tie it and put it around your toe and get a toenail and put it on the kitchen. You think somebody got your voodoo doll? He need to lick it. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, I always say that, too. Man. I'm just saying that, too. Whoever got mine, rub the coochie. <laughs> rub it a little rub bit. Rub the coochie part. Scratch it a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> um, do I think somebody has my voodoo doll? No. I, I really think somebody got one of me. Because why? What's going on? Nothing. Is it good stuff or bad stuff? Man, I feel like when somebody has a voodoo doll of you, they want bad things to happen. Mm -hmm. I don't think nobody has my voodoo doll. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think so. I don't know. I think people are crazy. I think you will be surprised, like, what people be having going on behind closed doors. I don't think somebody has a voodoo doll, but I do definitely think that people probably don't wish the best for me. But that's why I'm always speaking life into myself. And that's why I say, you know, I'm religious. I have a very great relationship with God. So I feel like, honestly, it don't matter what y'all wishing on me, my relationship with God is way more powerful than that, so it's always going to over-trump that. Do you so think you that can... shit really work, though? What? Like, when people be saying, oh, X, Y, and Z person do voodoo, and they done did voodoo on that person, and they had a whole bunch of bad you know what? shit happening. Do you feel like people really be doing it, and it works? It probably does. My brain is Jamaican. Yeah, I think it probably works, but it probably works on people. Um, the things that I've seen, it can work on people who don't necessarily believe in anything. I always believe that you should believe in something. My best so, if you have somebody, things can only happen to you if you don't believe in nothing and you can be mm. to, like I feel like but this is like also you said about manifesting manifesting doesn't work unless you put the work in so guess what if I'm sitting at home on my ass being depressed and I got somebody who wishing bad on me that wish hey I don't want Lex to make no money guess what if I'm sitting in my house guess what that's gonna come true for them because I'm sitting in my house being lazy but if I'm praying for this to happen for me but I'm also putting the work in that shit not gonna happen you know what I'm saying so I feel like Maybe, but I just have so much faith in myself and in my high, higher power. That shit don't faze me. I don't know. My best friend is Jamaican. Mm -hmm. And them Caribbean people, they be having some stories to tell oh. about voodoo and shit. I done seen some stories. Yeah. I got so invested in this story that this girl told. I saw it on YouTube. And she was saying how her sister was dating this man and he was Haitian and he killed her. Like, from voodoo shit. Mm. Now, do I think it's real? Yes. My sister had a situation when we was younger. Her nose kept you bleeding. You did say that. Her nose kept bleeding. My that. aunt's friend did voodoo on her. My sister nose never bleeding again. And my mama whooped her ass. She was like, don't do no voodoo on my daughter. She whooped. All you did is say she yeah. whooped the lady ass. Yeah, she was pissed. But you shouldn't have whooped the ass. It worked. <laughs> we ain't had no more blood on the couch. Now, what you want now? What you want, Annie? Come on now. So, I do think that it's real, but like I said, I choose not to, you know, dive in that too deep. No, yeah. I just watched good. American Horror Story Coven, so I'm not playing with that shit. Oh, yeah. Coven is like the best one. Girl, I watched it for the first time the other day. I said, oh. I feel like I told you about it years ago, though, when you said you was going to watch it. I know, you never and I did. never did, but I finally did. It's good. But I feel like, it, especially in New Orleans, too. Mm. You know what they say about New Orleans niggas? What they say? Mm, you better sip that voodoo juice. They say that. Oh, they say, a lot of Louisiana people say they don't eat spaghetti. I I mean, yeah. You know what they do to the spaghetti? No lie. Any red sauce though. It can be anything. Anything that got red sauce. But, but I feel like that's like the typical shit. I feel like nowadays, if you dealing with a bitch that does some voodoo stuff, she not 
that red sauce light work, she, she done already got your ass. She done already did something because that's so common. Literally, you can go to New York and they know about the red sauce shit. Mm -hmm. I feel like now the girls, if they doing, if they practicing stuff like that, you just gotta watch out and be careful because they not doing that Remember shit. we talked about that on one of the episodes, though. Remember we was talking about how, like, having sex on your period is voodoo? Oh. I, and it is. I had to break... That's why I partially do believe in voodoo because I feel like anybody... Do you remember how down bad throwback they had me? Because I don't have... And I did. Oh, I had to break that spell. Mm -hmm. I had to pray to my Lord. I had to get anointed. I had to get a... Hello. Girl, I had to pray six times a day. I'm telling you, when you have sex on your period, that really is like some deeper soul tie voodoo it's, type of connection. It's voodoo. And you know what? Me and this nigga are literally... We're best friends now. Like, that's my guy. Like, we cool... But it's still like we bonded for life. Mm -hmm. mm. You better it's say scary. that's what I said it two times. Mm. What's up, y'all? It's your girl XP. And it's your girl Dre and Nicole. And we just wanted to come and talk to y'all and let y'all know that we do have sponsor packages available for this tour coming up. Yes, for richer for poor too. We do have sponsorship packages available. If you would like to be a sponsor for the live tour, all you need to do is hit us up at Drea and Lick Show at gmail.com. That's D-R-E-A-A-N-D-L-E-X-S-H-O-W at gmail.com and all of the details will be provided to you but yes if you want to be a sponsor if you have a small business if you have a big business whatever type of business you got we all about business Ooh. go ahead and hit us up and we're gonna send you all of the details so that you can get your business sponsored with us for richer for poor too yes and like she said we have different packages available mm -hmm. for purchase so make sure y'all email us drea and lex show at gmail.com and we'll see y'all on the road period yeah, so let us know how y'all feel about manifestation and if it's voodoo or not and how y'all mm -hmm. feel with the religious things. Okay, I'm excited to talk about this. So now we gonna get into, into the bed. Ow. The bed. Bow. The bed. Bow. Bow. Why nobody said bow, bow, bow? I don't know. Um, so today we're gonna talk about types of lube. And I also want to talk about the... Um, so people feel like if you have to use lube that you're not this and you're not that. But mm -hmm. and I want to talk about why it's okay to use lube in the bedroom as well. Okay, so first, have you used lube in the bedroom before? Mm-hmm. Why you said it like that? Because I did. Do you like it? For where I used it, yeah. Where can I ask where did you sure. use it? Okay, where did you Bookie. use it? Where did you use it? On my booty, Buki. What was you... Can I ask what you were inserting? <laughs> was it a toy? Was it a butt plug? A finger? A penis? A person. Okay. A part... <laughs> what? You know what? Actually, I don't want to know. Um, okay, so... <laughs> you use it on your booty hole. Thanks. Um, So they have three different types of lube. Mm -hmm. They have water, oil, and silicone based. Okay. Well, everybody know you're not supposed to use oil, especially if you're using a condom. Well, they said oil is okay as long as you're not using a condom or you're not using toys, but it's thicker and it lasts longer than water based. Mm -hmm. Water based is the safest because you can use it whenever you use your toys, but it dries very quickly. Mm -hmm. But water is the most common lubricant that people see. Like in the stores and things. I mean, like yeah, that. because it's the safest. Because mm -hmm. yeah, again, Ty, like. Can you bring, can you bring that lube? Let me see. Let me see. We got some lube, y'all. Mm -hmm. Thank you, girl. Oh, one. this is funny. I actually got these. Mm -hmm. but not the flavor wing. A freaky ass hoe. Two times. <laughs> okay. Well, because. So is this a water based? That one is water. Yeah. Okay. It's made from Does it? Can you eat it? Absolutely. Ooh! I was about to say. Okay, Dre, how much are you gonna put on your hand? Okay, you wanna see? It looks a little thick. I was trying to look at the consistency. Let I mean, see. so yeah, that ain't. Yeah, that don't look like it's me. It's not. <laughs> <laughs> me, boo. Okay, okay. Right here. But no, I feel like, okay, but if you're a person who has like sensitive skin, um, you know, things, your skin usually reacts to things, you're using toys, water based is the best way to go. Let me see how it feels. Yeah, I like some a little. I like thick. I like thick. 
Can I ask you, what do you use your lube for? So, honestly, I'm not gonna lie. I've never used lube in, in the bedroom until recently. What did you use it for? Uh, I ain't never used it either. Yeah. Until, I'm not like, gonna lie, like, like you know, I like to have, uh, I always say talk about like marathon sex and you know, going a long time. So I was recently um, involved in some marathon sex and we was just having a lot of sex. And you know, sometimes, you know, it don't, but you still wanna go, but it's still, you know, it get dry out of there. I only got so much water now. Mm -hmm. If I drank eight liters of water, but I've been fucking for 10 hours, bitch, how long you want you me do to the go? Math. You do the math, ho ass Nick. It's only so I much Fiji in the Kwee Kwee. So, we had to, you know, I had to use a little <laughs> doot doot doot. Uh, and it, hey, it got the party started. So, what, which, which brand did you use? Honestly, I don't know what he was using. I know what I use. I don't, I don't know because I've never used it, but I knew he, I knew, I knew what time it was because I, I, I seen, I said, oh Lord, he not, he not done. And I was like, okay, so, but I don't mind. Like, like I said, I always felt like when I was younger, like, oh, if you use lube, your pussy dry and this and that. But like, honestly, if you have a partner that y'all like multiple rounds and y'all are going for a round, it's literally not scientifically possible for your pussy to stay wet for hours and hours on oh, end. Yeah. If y'all are having rounds, I don't care how wet and good your pussy is, you're not staying wet all night. Yeah. So I feel like the first time I used lube, like I said, was recently, and it was cool. I liked it. It wasn't bad. I don't know which base it was. Um, I think it was water-based, though. So for me, I want to try silicone-based. Mm. Now, silicone-based is more expensive, and it's harder to find. And you can't use this with toys. Mm. So, um, like Why? I said... Um, because it can mess up, because usually toys are made out of silicone, silicone. as well, so it'll like wear it down. Mm. So that's, I think that's why we had a water-based one, because we were using toys as well. Oh, nasty. It's getting too wild. What the fuck was going on over they, there? I know the neighbors was like, police! <laughs> Somebody die! Help, he keep fucking me. <laughs> Help, police! No, so... He would have came into a scene, hun. Whew. That's crazy. But, okay, so, but yeah, I think lube, I like it. I love it, honestly. Like, I wouldn't mind, like, actually incorporating it into the bedroom more often. I've never used it, and I had a great experience. I never used it, like, for my coochie yeah, before. Yeah, yeah, me neither. But because I don't like marathon sex, like, I be trying to get up out of the... Mm -hmm. I be trying to be done. Yeah, I, I, I was, too. No, clearly you was not. I, clearly I, you wasn't. I, I don't want to have sex. I don't want to have sex more than like... People be talking about they be having sex like three, four times a day. That's crazy. Yeah, and that's what I'm saying. For that's me, crazy. Now, let me not say... I like, don't want to have sex It wasn't for hours and hours, but we were having like sex throughout the day. and You know what yeah. I'm saying? And like I said... Y'all nasty. Garfield was like this. <laughs> But I still wanted to do it because it was fun. So, yeah. I only ever use like booty lube. Booty lube. Mm -hmm. Okay, can you tell your story about Well, your I mean, literally the name of it was Astroglide. I said, oh, this sound like it's gonna do what I needed. Astroglide? <laughs> Who bought it? You or him? Cause I'm just me, because I don't give a fuck. I'll go up in a sex. I'm one of the people I love going to the sex Me store. Me too, I do. Like I will literally go up in there and be asking questions. I don't care who up in there. I was like, yes. I was like, is this for the booty? Which one is the best? <laughs> is this for your booty? This so you wanted something in your asshole. Yes, I was like, this is my this is gonna be my first time. What do I use? What did you put in your booty hole? <laughs> Bitch, I just told you. You did <laughs> Astro Glide? <laughs> this is astronomical. <laughs> I am astounded. This. Did you like it? I've done it a lot of times. All right, this, this is enough point. at this point. God damn it. Okay, so you have to use lube for the booty hoe. You got to. You got to. Okay. Um, I tried spit one time. It didn't work out that well. Not this, no, I don't, I'm not using spit because spit don't. You can get the little tip in there, but that's all it's gonna do. Yeah. And then, um, like we said, we talked about oil. Now, oil is something you can use, but I don't know. I just feel like 
I'm not, I don't want to use oil. But this is another one because people, sometimes people are allergic to silicone, so oil is the alternative. Um, but you, like I said, you can't use that with condoms. You can't use oil or silicone with condoms. Thanks. Um, I can't. You would. Speak on condoms for the people. And how they should use condoms. We've sold them that before. They know that. Yeah. They went to school. Mm -hmm. You use condoms? Yeah. When I need to. You should need to every time you have sex. Mm. I, mean, I be having monogamy sex. Mm, that's good. Yeah. That's good. I always use protection. No. Nope. And the Lord protects me every time. All right. No. Now we going to get into... You're crazy. How am I crazy? Because why would you lie like that? I do use protection. The Lord protects me. Amen. My sister. Rick in this motherfucker. <sighs> Y'all being real judgy. I don't like that. I'm not being judgy. Let me sip my voodoo dick. I mean, my voodoo juice. <laughs> hey, what's up, Chicago? It's your man, Carlos Miller. July the 21st, I will be in the city. Pull up on me, man. You know I'm going to be at the Riviera Theater, man. So, you know, put your little clean-ass outfit on. Make sure your lady looking good and pull up on your folks, man. We're going to have a good time. We're talking good shit, Chicago. That's July the 21st. Come check up on me. We're going to be cleaner than a mug in there. Come see me. At the end of the day, I'm on tour, so just make sure you get the tickets and holler at me and, you know, just come have a good time. I'll see you when I get there. Week. I'm gonna let you go. I've been first. listening to that song. I'm in the club, thugging with my brown. My coochie pink. My, my booty, booty hole brown. brown. I'm not gonna lie. It's a hit. It's it's the summer bob. I feel like we should walk out to that. I'ma walk out to it. You know why? I don't I yeah. don't know. Yeah, we walking out to it. We walking out to it. I feel like it's a mood. The girls is trying to be outside. They trying to turn up and have fun. Like, mm -hmm. why not? Why not? You know what I'm saying? Like, it's too many bitches. Where the niggas at? That's sometimes how I be feeling. I feel like that all the time. Now, I'm not going to lie, y'all. I'm about to put y'all on some game to the ladies that live in Houston, Texas. I went to Chapman and Kirby the other day. The niggas was outside. Oh, my God. The ratio of men to women. I said, I'm trying to get my cooties. Woo! Girl. Was they fine? Though? Yes. It was a lot of fine niggas in the building. I was actually shocked because niggas be ugly. <laughs> the fine ones decided <laughs> to come outside. I don't know what they was on, but they <laughs> they do be ugly. Ooh, they was ugly, girl. Houston, but I will say, Houston got, like, fine-ass niggas, though. And I'm not being biased, Aww. just because I'm from there, but they do. They got... That's a good man right there. <sighs> I'm tired of that man. <laughs> Lay his what? name to rest. <laughs> he don't even, I'm not even giving him a nickname because I'm a jinx it. 
We tired, child. We are tired. How tired are we are of it? But um, no, yeah, I was actually shocked. So if y'all in Houston, this is a really free promo for them. Cause like I was shocked. Cause girls be like, oh, where the niggas at? In Baby, Houston, they at Chapman and Kirby on a Sunday, honey. Cause they was definitely outside. And you know what? Chapman I went to and Kirby a gay be club fun for the first on Sundays time. too. I went to a gay club for the first time. You told me that. Oh my god, it was a ball. What was the name of it? I cannot remember the name of it, and I'm so sad. But I went out. Um, with my friend Lauren's friend, shout out to Tyson, Brandon, Sherrod. We had a time, baby. When I tell you they know how to party. Yeah, I told you. Me and my best friend went to this gay club back when we was like 19. We was not supposed to be there. Mm -hmm. It was called Big Yo's. Is that what turned you into the Q? The plus? The plus, I mean. Um, no, because it was a whole bunch of niggas in there. Okay, okay. But they was having a motherfucking oh, ball. Oh, yeah. It like, was, they was... I was shocked because when I went, I was actually getting hit on, but it was, like, by bisexual men. Like, they were looking for, like, a girl because mm. they wanted to... You ain't go? I mean, I I don't want to get ran train on, but I feel like for the girls, that that's their fantasy. Oh, it was two guys looking yeah, for a girl. Yeah, they were looking for a girl because they were bisexual and they wanted... So if you're a girl that wants, uh, like, your fantasy is to have... Go to the gay club, because they be there. I was like, y'all are really cute. They be outside. I can't handle two dicks. I cannot. So, but for the girls who can... Yeah. That's where you Two dicks at one time seem like a lot. Mm -hmm. hmm. I just feel like it's too many juices flowing. I love the juices, though, but I just need the juices from one person. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm saying. Too, too many, like, different juices. Yeah. Um, so, uh, my bop of the week this week, uh, I have been loving... This came out, you know, a minute ago, but I've been listening to Dog Tooth by Tyler the Creator. That is my song. I really like Tyler the Creator. I feel like this nigga really be rapping his ass off. Mm. And like people know that because obviously, you know, he's a Grammy winner and like people fuck with him. But I feel like a lot of times people kind of write him off because they feel like, you know, he has a totally different style from like the little babies and shit like that. But boy, it's cold. Mm. He makes phenomenal music. He's super creative. So, yeah, that's my bop of the week. Dog okay. to Tyler Creator. You know, I try to keep it out of the R&B this week because I know I always be doing the R&B. So, mm -hmm. yeah, that's what I've been jamming. Mm-hmm. Okay, so now it's time for your item of the week. What is yes. your Yes, okay, so I think it's up here. Item of the week is actually a book that I ordered that I read. So, I know a lot of times on this show we talk about relationship topics and I think a lot of times y'all think we're specifically talking about men a lot of the times but a lot of the things that we talk about can be applied to you know your relationship with your boss at your job you know your friendships you know friends uh your friendship I mean your relationship with family members so I had ordered this book the art of letting go the reason I ordered this book is because like I was going through some grief, you know, like when my, when my mom passed, and I didn't know how to let, like, this anger go that I had. Mm -hmm. Because, like, I was mad at my mom, you know, for a while. So The Art of Letting Go is a book, and it gives you, like, small stories. And, and it gives you poems. And you can apply this. They're so general that you can apply it to any situation. Mm -hmm. And when I tell y'all this book made me feel so good and let me know that I'm not alone, mm -hmm. and, like, everybody has problems with letting go, whether it be a relationship, mm -hmm. a man you're dealing with, a friend who's toxic, you know, like I said, dealing with grief, or you know how sometimes, like, you go out for a job or you audition for something, you don't get it, and you just hound on yourself, like, why didn't I do this? Why didn't I get this job? I wasn't good enough. So it lets you know how to let go of maybe opportunities that you've missed. Mm -hmm. So if you're a person who kind of, like, hounds on things and you kind of get that woe is me attitude about stuff... This is a book you definitely need to read. Like I said, it's broken up into, like, different poems. Um, and you can get it on Amazon. But, yeah, it's really good. So it's called The Art of Letting Go. It's the thought catalog, so y'all can see what it looks like because, yeah. And how did you say you found out about it? Um, honestly, I just be, like, researching different stuff. Oh, I'm a Googler, okay? So when I'm feeling type, I'll be like, oh. So, honestly, I think I was just Googling one day, and it had mm -hmm. just, like, came up because I was like trying to figure out, like, how do I let go of things? Because you know me. I'm a woe. I used, well, I used to be. I kind of still am, but I'm working on it. I'm a woe with me ass bitch. I, if I let myself, I'm going to be in the bed feeling sorry for myself. So I found it, and like I said, I was like, okay, wow, other people have felt this. Um, 
There was one story in here in particular that I really loved because it was talking about this woman who felt like she met the love of her life. Mm -hmm. And when they broke up, she was so devastated. And then it's like she moved on and she actually got married. And she was like happy in her marriage, but she was still thinking about like the what ifs. And then she realized, like, okay, I have to let this go because this wasn't my person. And it was more so of, like, like we said in the past, like, it's an ego thing. Mm -hmm. And this is the person that loves you unconditionally. That person didn't love you unconditionally. Right. So it just teaches you and shows you situations to let you know that you're really not alone. Because sometimes I think we go through things as humans and we're like, nobody knows how I feel. Nobody understands when I'm telling you. We all going through yeah, it. Yeah, I feel like certain feelings are universal. Yes, for sure. Like, everybody go through it. I think mm -hmm. some things that happen to people in life are very specific. Mm -hmm. And everybody not going to go through that. Like, but for it's an emotion that people have felt. Yeah, but it's certain emotions that it's like, it's, it's pretty broad. Mm -hmm. Like, I feel like it's something everybody is going to experience at some point in life. And grief is one of those things. Oh, absolutely. I actually mm -hmm. saw, let me look this up real quick before we move on. I actually saw this. Um, now, this, prison, I might not experience that. But you can feel the sadness of feeling locked up. I, I mean, I've been in a jail. Exactly. Not prison, no. Oh, yeah. But it's a difference being in there for two days. Yeah, it is. It is. And being in there for forever. 20 years. Mm -hmm. But I found this article the other you day. Yeah, I poured something out for them, for them folks. Ot, ot. We poured out the lube already. <laughs> It says, the Surgeon General declared widespread loneliness a public health epidemic in the U.S., saying it poses risk as deadly as smoking a dozen cigarettes a day. Like, loneliness mm. is so bad. Like, it causes depression, suicide. Like, I don't think people realize, like, a lot of people experience loneliness. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I feel like, honestly, that's why social media is so popular, because that's the only time people get to talk to other people. You got to realize that, like, people take advantage of, like, having a friend to call on because a lot of people don't even have that. Mm -hmm. A lot of people experience, you know, loneliness. And that's why I said a lot of people are going through things that you feel like you're alone. It's a lot of people who are alone who feel, out there, yeah. you know? So, For yeah. Sure. My item of the week, The Art of Letting Go, it's a really good read. Like I said, I really enjoyed it. it and it's not even like a hard read. It's not like something like you got to spend time on and do all this, but it's a good read. Okay. So we ain't did this in a minute, what? but we're going to do a movie breakdown. Oh, Lord. Let's do it. They love when we do movie breakdowns, we haven't, though. We haven't done a movie breakdown in a long we time. We haven't did one in a minute. Okay, go ahead, sister girl. I want to talk about the Whitney Houston movie, mm -hmm. I Want to Dance with Somebody. Yes. Oh, Whitney. I want them to leave me alone. I'm tired. You tired? I'm, I'm tired of the Whitney remakes. I feel like we've had enough. And I just Which feel one like... did we have before this one? The one with Yaya. Oh, yeah. But they didn't use original Whitney Houston music. So this They one... didn't. They didn't. That's true. So, go ahead. I, I don't feel like the movie was bad. I just feel like I wish they would have found somebody that, like, looks like more her. like her. Because I then agree. I... I'm not gonna lie. Like, I'm one of those people, when I look at movies, if it's somebody who really resembles the person, then I really feel like you I could... get into it. I could really get into it. But then it's like, if it don't look like the person... I then... will say, she had her mannerisms down pat, though. Like, yeah. she studied the fuck out of Whitney because it was definitely giving her mannerisms. But I agree. Like, to me... Everybody loved Ray because Jamie embodied Ray. Like, he looked like him, he sounded like him, he talked like him, he walked like him. Like, it was everything. I think that Will Smith did a really good job when he played Mom, Ali, too. Yeah, like, oh, my God. That yeah. was a good one. That was a good comparison, too. Um, but I feel like the actress did an amazing job, but she just didn't look like her. Like, I feel like they, you know, they put teeth in her mouth to kind of, like... But it was yeah, because she has a gap in real life. Yeah, but yeah. you know what? To me, it was more so of the eyes. Like, her eyes looked... It was not giving Whitney, and... I listen. I have a story about Whitney and Bobby. Bobby, 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 Bobby. Yeah, Bobby. it wasn't Bobby. That was not giving Bobby. Now, what's his name? That I was not him? feeling He it. is such a talented actor. Oh yeah, he was in a Wu Tang show. Yeah, he was on he's the Wu Tang talented, show. But that just we're Woody. 
They should have just got Woody again. Again. Woody? I don't understand why Woody should play Bobby Brown in every, every movie that Bobby Brown's going to be in for the rest of our lives. Like that nigga that played Suge Knight. <laughs> he played Suge Knight in Straight Outta Compton. And then when Michelle A came out with her movie that was like this and that movie, he played in that bitch and too. Didn't, and didn't the man that played Biggie in the B.I.G. movie, didn't he play Biggie again in the Tupac Let movie? Let me tell you something. I think he did, right? That nigga going to show up to every Biggie audition because he know. <laughs> Ate that. He ate it. He, he ate, ate it. it up. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. I just think certain people just need to be, what is it called? Cast type typecasting. Yeah, but I don't think... To those roles. Yeah. To those specific yeah. roles. Not saying you can't do anything else, because Woody be killing it on yeah, power. he definitely does. So, not saying that that's all he should play, but, like, if it's a movie where we need a Bobby Brown, please just cast Woody. What are we doing? Okay, and also, I feel like this. Whitney Houston's story is so... It's so much to it. So they, they jumbled it up. They jumbled it up and they skipped so Many much. Many parts. They did not even get into her and Bobby Christina's relationship, which was a big... Y'all know how she was about Bobby Christina. Like, it was just so much that they skipped around. They didn't even really... Like, they got into it with her and Bobby, but not even really... We didn't see the reality show. That, girl. We didn't see when she cussed out Wendy Williams. It was a lot of stuff that they kind of just, it like... It was a lot of things that were skipped. A lot of things. A lot of things that were skipped. But, like I said, I get it. But you know how the Jacksons, they had, like, four parts of their movie. That's what they should have did. We needed a four-part I mean, the, Houston. the Jacksons have also had numerous movies, and I personally, if we gonna get into that... We not, but go ahead. <laughs> but go ahead. Why? Get into it. Flex flat out. Okay. <laughs> I knew. That's why I said no. What do you mean? That Flex was... Alexander playing... <laughs> you need to be fucking around... Flex Alexander, I will never forgive you because you know better than that. You know fucking better than that. You are a seasoned <laughs> actor and you took your tiny ass <laughs> in that dressing room and let them put powder on your motherfucking face and got the nerve to get in front of that camera and say, he, he, <laughs> go to jail. I'm not gonna lie. That's one of the worst movies I ever <laughs> seen. seen in my life, bro. Now the five part Michael, J the five part Jackson movie. Oh yeah, the Jason one with Weaver Angela Bassett. I thought that Jason Weaver was him. Yeah, for real. Mm -hmm. Like that was a great it. movie. That, that was, was a great. That movie. was a good one. That was a good one. But yeah, but the one with Flex, Jill. Prison. Period, period. All of y'all. I mean, all the characters that they have for the Michael Jackson, the five part, even the teenage Michael, like, it looks exactly It's a few like movies him. we can get into, though, where, like, they just shouldn't have been made. Like what? Like, the Aaliyah movie just shouldn't have been oh made. Oh, my God. That was a terrible movie. They did not do my good either. sis any justice. You know, honestly, I feel like after she did that movie, she kind of disappeared. Rightfully so. Because <laughs> she did the little X-Men <laughs> movie, but people was not feeling my sis. <laughs> Let me tell you something. Get get your... <laughs> Because, girl, what was you singing? The song was called More Than a Woman. She sang More Than a Girl. <laughs> they couldn't get the license in. She was singing More Than a Girl. That movie, I take that back. I said the Michael Jackson movie was the worst. Aaliyah was pretty bad. Aaliyah topped Flick. They had no original music. Now, you know which one was Flex, I could still, I still fuck with him because One on One was my shit. Girl, fuck he you. He was great on that now, show. Now, you know which one was Fire? TLC. Ate that. The okay. TLC movie, fire. That was good. They fire. That was good. What's her name? I don't even like Drew Sador ever since the game, but she ate up T-Boss part. Not because of the game. I thought you was going to say because of R-H-O-A. Mm, that too. Well, I really don't like her husband, but that's another topic. Mm -hmm. But uh, Kiki Palmer as Chili, Little she Mama ate. as Left the Oh, mm -hmm. that it was, was good. a good one. It's like they just embodied them. Some Biopics be really... That's the thing about biopics. I feel like it's hit or miss. Because mm. the Bobby Brown movie was great. You know who I'm playing? If they ever do a biopic about Tiffany New York Pollard... Flavor Flav! Flav! You know what? Delicious. You can go. I'm gonna do it. You don't see me as Tiffany... New York Pollard. If they do a, a movie on what's gonna call it, what's that? Public Enemy. 
And then they got to get into Flavor Flavor, his reality well, show. Well, the only thing is, I love, and I love New York, but I'm just trying to figure out why they would give her a biopic. They're not giving her one. They're giving Flavor. They're giving public. Oh. They're giving them one. Okay. And then they're going to do, like, a scene okay. where he went off and did his reality show. And I'm like, Flav, Flav, you know what? And that's what I'm going to do. That's what I'm going to do. Delicious. Pick your neck up. So You're looking like a soup kitchen. Pick it up. No, that's good. I that's know. really good. Yeah, the, the girl is good. <laughs> However, why is that who you choose in a play? That's I'm trying to think, do. Who, who do I feel like I could play in a biopic? I think you could do... Who you think? What is it giving? It's giving... I'm trying to smize. Let me look up her name. I know exactly I feel what like you should do. Who? Summer Walker. You could do a little Summer Walker documentary. How old the hell am I going to be, oh, though? Because yeah. Y'all the same <laughs> age. I got one. I got one. <laughs> yeah, that's... Uh, you I right. Think, I, I think by the time Summer Walker need a biopic, I don't know if I'm qualified. I I'm fucking sure. weak. Okay, I got one. You can play Tricks from Players Club. <laughs> <laughs> Bitch. <laughs> Remember when Diamond punched the shit out of her and she fell? Yeah. He said, no, my baby. <laughs> oh, Lord. Why is that who I got to play? Because she like, not because y'all look alike, because she real Oh, ghetto. I know we don't look alike. <laughs> I'm like, maybe it's the lips. <laughs> you could, exactly, the lips. But I feel like if they did an updated version, of course, everybody going to be fine. You could play tricks because she was really like, you know, in the background, you know. I don't want to be that. No, I would rather be... I I would rather be Ebony. I feel like I got that shit down pat. I just came to dance for y'all. That's it. Your personality too strong for Ebony. Ebony had to be like... Trix didn't even have no lines. How you gonna say... How you Nothing. gonna say my personality too strong for Ebony? But you made Trix me a bitch who didn't have no lines? I think Trix is a star <laughs> And then once you play Trix so good, they gonna actually come out with a spinoff. I would rather play Bernie Mac. Dollar trouble, bill. Trouble, trouble. <laughs> but anyways, back to the movie we're talking about, Whitney Houston. Um, like I said, she had her mannerisms down. They had to skip a lot. Um, the guy who played Clive Davis, I can't think of his name, but he is such He did a, a great job. Yeah. He is a phenomenal Now, he actor. did a great job. What? Well, let me not say that. The movie the was great. The movie was great. Yeah. The movie I'm was not bad. saying the movie was bad. Yeah. I just wish that Whitney looked, looked more, more like Whitney. Yeah. But the acting was actually really great. Um, Nefessa Williams. Oh, my God. She played the she did hell a really good out of job, Robin. Which really showed her range, too, because she's such a girly oh, girl. Oh, she's a woman in real life. Like, yeah. yeah. So she was definitely giving. But she ate. Big, that whole Macy Gray. <laughs> That's how the song goes, right? Big Night Cold get it though, man. Macy Gray. Gray yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she was giving that. Why would why okay. would the Migos uh -huh. ever say that in that song? Cause Macy Gray, I didn't even know I didn't even know that about her until I listened to that song. Is she gay? I don't care. I like Macy Gray. I do too. I be trying to walk away and I stumble Strange every time. Change and fish. Where do they go from here? What song it is? What song? When do they stop? I believe that they... You don't remember that song? I try to say goodbye and not true. That's the only part I know. What a but that was my favorite part. That was not your song. Oh, remember she had that, um, that song? What with song? that Nickelodeon show she did the opening? Someone once told me the grass was much greener. That was her? On the other Ginger, side. Ginger, it's so yeah! Ginger. Yeah, that was her? Yes! But I paid a visit and I found out. Mm-hmm. Mm okay, let's move on. Okay. Shout out to Macy Gray. <laughs> and shout out come to... Come on, poor minds, if you happen to see this. <laughs> and confirm or deny what they said about you in that song. <laughs> you don't have to confirm or deny anything, Macy. Y'all can be a part of the plus together. <laughs> So now we're going to get into the Pour Your Heart Out segment of the show. Make sure if you want your question oh answered God. on the show, you email us at askpoorminds at gmail.com. If you're a Patreon member, make sure you put in the subject line that you're a Patreon. I love how Dad always give me question number one. Because he know your ass going to fuck it up. I'm going to fuck this up either. It don't matter if I'm one, two, three, <laughs> four, six, bitch. Oh. I think we should switch. 
<laughs> I think so too, actually. Hey, Lexandrea, please keep me anonymous because the feds be watching ill or will. How can we not if you ain't tell us your name? She might have signed it, and that's why he covered it up. Mm. Okay, so I got myself in a sticky situation. I accidentally made my boss my sugar daddy, and he's taking me to Miami next month. I'm nervous because I know this man gonna want some coochie, but I feel like it will make work awkward, and I'll probably want to quit if I give it to him. But I also don't want to say no because I'm enjoying all the things he has to offer. I've been having a time spending his money. My friend said I might just have to give him a crumb of coochie, lol. I don't want to quit my job or give up my sugar daddy help what should i do p.s i love y'all so much get that coochie up and keep it player separate work from having fun because if y'all do stop talking still do your job to the capacity that you've been doing it on why you got hired and keep it cool most of the time when th situations like that get sticky when emotions get involved now i will say don't develop feelings for him but if you have a plan, stick to it. Have fun. Enjoy yourself. And just be smart. Is your coochie good, though? That's the question. Yeah, because it's... if you give it to him and it ain't... Your feelings gonna get hurt. He might fire a... your ass. Oh, oh. Now you done lost your sugar daddy <laughs> and your job. Well, he not gonna fire her. He might. What well, on what grounds? <laughs> that that coochie... <laughs> that coochie poo. <laughs> now he gonna write on the thing, coochie poo. <laughs> No, but I feel like I had, you know what? I have never been through that situation, but one of my really close friends was in that situation and it worked out fine for her, but she also, she really kept it play. And she was just like, you know, I don't have feelings for him. And after they stopped talking, she still kept her job mm -hmm. and still, you know, was making the same amount of money. And it was just cool. Cause she was like, she, when she walked in the room, she wasn't looking at him funny. She was just still acting like a professional. So mm -hmm. if you know how to separate work and pleasure very well, I would say it's for you. But if you're an emotional person and you feel like you're going to get your feelings involved, don't do it. Mm -hmm. So I think you need to ask yourself, what can you handle? What can you deal with? Mm -hmm. Good advice, Lex. That was great. <laughs> Go ahead, Buki. Okay. Hey, ladies, I love y'all show. So I thought I would get y'all advice on a situation that had just caused me to fall out with a friend. Okay, so here's the tea. Me and this friend have a mutual male friend. We are all co co-workers. But he was my sneaky link for a long time. I never told her about it because it wasn't relevant at the time, but me and her got cool as fuck. I know he also has a crush on her, and I never told her about me and him because she was saying he was not her type and how she doesn't look at him like that. So in my mind, I'm thinking I could just take it to the grave, LOL. Fast forward a year later, she calls me like, girl, guess who I got up with over the weekend? And I'm like, who? She says him. She like, yeah, we almost had sex. Now I'm kind of thrown off, so I'm asking my day one friend, should I say something? They all like, yeah, because we are all now kind of close as fuck. I think it's fake to let her catch feelings for him knowing I've slutted him the fuck out a million times. So I told her me and him used to fuck and it wasn't that long ago, like last year. First she was acting like it was cool and she was glad I said something. Now she's saying she thinks she got feelings for him and it's not that deep. She also said I shouldn't feel no type of way because I didn't tell her in advance but I also kind of feel like as my friend, once I tell you I slept with a nigga you supposed to shut that shit down regardless. Oh, this is funny. Who wants to fuck someone after they friend? She kept saying she doesn't know what to do and she still likes him and we both put her in a weird situation. And now we aren't speaking. Shaking my head. What's y'all's thoughts on this? You slutted him out and you didn't care about him. You're mad because they like each other. Because why do you care? If this was just some dick to you, why do you care if they like each other? Now you mad, pooping in. She, she sounds mad to me. I'm sorry, friend. I'm sorry, but you sound like you're upset. Because now, me personally, if my friend has slutted somebody out and blah, 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 I'm not going to date them. But you didn't... It already had happened. So by the time she started fucking with him, it was like, oh, shit, well, it's too late now. So I think you're upset. That's what it's giving to me. Because if it was just a nigga I don't fuck, hey, Dre, that's on you. If you want to fuck that nigga, I don't care. So why do you, oh, I just think that it's weird that you're dating somebody out. I don't care. That's her decision. It sounds like you're upset and you need to be real about maybe your feelings towards that nigga. Yeah, because you said you never told her about it. So you can't be mad when some people do stuff and then they don't know about it. It's different if somebody start fucking with somebody and they knew they know. that you was fucking with them. I feel like everybody has their person that's off guards. Like we all, especially niggas, they be like, hey, this the bitch, this my best eater. You can't fuck with her. 
this the girl I love. You can't fuck with her. I would die if a nigga caught me his best eater. I mean, you know, that's how niggas be sometimes. I don't be knowing. I don't want to be nobody's best eater. You are somebody's best eater. I am, but I don't want you calling me that. Well, you are, unfortunately. It happens. You're somebody's <laughs> best eater. They're like, damn, I lost that eater. You are. It's okay. It just happens. But what I'm saying is, everybody has people that's off limits. So if you have feelings for that nigga, oops, yo bad. It sounds like you're upset that he actually likes her and it's beyond sex. Because what you're making mm. it seem like is that y'all was just sex. And now that she's dealing with him, it's a little bit more emotional, and they actually like each other. And it sounds like you feel some type of way about that puka nook. So um, I think you probably need to that's check That's what it's giving, Buki. Yeah, that's I what just giving. think that you... She said they not talking no more. Yeah, You're not... Wait, not. she not talking to the girl or him or both of them? I don't know. She didn't specify. She not talking to the girl? Falling out over a nigga is wild. Probably not with your friend. Over well, she just nigga. said, and now we aren't speaking. So she didn't say who stopped talking to who. But for you to say, I just think it's weird for somebody to date somebody that you done slutted out. Yeah, it is weird. But why do you care? But you also was not honest at first. Mm -hmm. I feel like if you were honest from jump, the situation would have never happened. Right. That's what you got to keep in mind. If she fucked your nigga knowing you used to fuck with him, yeah, that bitch fucked up. That's right. some fucked up ass shit. But the fact that you told her after the fact, after you knew her and him already liked each other, mm -hmm. and then you expected them to not date each other no more because just because you said that, that's crazy because you had plenty of space and opportunity to be honest and, and then, upfront. And Andrea, he has a crush on her, and you knew that. He been liking this girl. He was just waiting on the opportunity for her to come around. And I'm sorry, look, you was just like somebody to keep him cool in the meantime. Which, we've all been that. We've all been the girl that just keeps somebody, keep the seat warm till he get what he really want. Everybody has been in that position before. It's okay. But you just said, she said it. I know he also has a crush on her, and I never told her about me and him. So, you knew that he likes her. So, mm -hmm. he was really waiting on his opportunity. So, mm -hmm. it's like, you really have nobody to be mad at. Like, you knew that he always wanted her. And low-key, sorry to say it, but, like, he never really wanted you, but, you know, y'all was fucking. You was slutting him out. Why not? It was something to do the past time. You were slutting him out too good. Mm. I mean, she probably was. But maybe, maybe not. I mean, she probably was, and he was just like, all right, the, the girl that I've been liking want me now. I'm out. Mm. And a lot of times you can say somebody not your type, but she probably never, ever really had a conversation or went out with him. Sometimes people grow on you. So, yeah, sis. No, so he got a crush on her, and then she got a crush on him. I think the, the girl that wrote the letter, Loki, likes him more than she's putting on. That's what I'm saying. I feel like she got a crush on him. It's okay, Sue. It's okay, girl. girl. We all done been played before. Mm -hmm. Um, all right, y'all. What's my favorite thing to say? Get you a new nigga. Get you a new nigga, girl. Don't, you'll get over it. It's going to be okay. Work. All right, so now we got the voicemail segment. Make sure y'all keep y'all voicemails, you know, minute, 45, 30 seconds in London. You know, we Them don't like it candles smell good. It do. Good. Um, so, yeah, this is not to get advice. You know, just get things off your chest. What's been bothering you? You got something to say about the show, suggestions, whatever you want to say. We're going to put the number at the bottom of the screen. So, there, we got a voicemail today, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so y'all, we got the voicemail coming up. Dad, we got a voicemail today. All right, let's listen to it. Hey, y'all. I just wanted to call and let y'all know that I love what y'all do. I've seen y'all grow so much throughout the years. I've been watching y'all since I was like, what, 19? And y'all are like one of the only black women out here who I feel like I can relate to, even though y'all are like a couple years older than me. Um, I also just want to say to the nigga that I started watching this show with, Dre, I don't want you. You are not Drake. And I hope life is not going good for you. But I'm up. Um, someone that I really want to see on the podcast again is Ken the Man. Who else do I want to see on here while I'm on here? Let me give you all my suggestions. Um, Mona Leo. Please get Mona Leo on there. ASAP, ASAP, ASAP. Who else? If y'all can get Lotto on that bitch. Basically, all the female rappers. Like, let's get it. Um, Yeah, I love y'all. Bye. Now, see, did we just talk about manifesting a wishing bad on people? What'd she say? 
She said, I also just want to say to the nigga that I, that I started watching this show with, Drea do not want you. You are not Drake. And I hope Ooh. life is not going good for you. Ooh. See how we talk about men? The, the sorcery. <laughs> oh, it got real nasty. Now, why me and Aubrey in these? Now, wh- what? You know Aubrey? Just like I know Wit? No, I okay. don't know him. All right, y'all. Make sure y'all get y'all tickets. We on tour. You know what I'm saying? Come catch us at a city near you. www.poorminds.com. You ready for the karaoke song? I'm ready, Pookie. Let's get it. What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Lex T. And it's your girl, Dre in the cold. And I got some really good news for y'all. Yes, period, y'all. We are about to revamp our whole Patreon. Yes. We got so much new shit coming soon for y'all. Like, we about to be doing challenges. We about to be doing vlogs. Mm-hmm. We really about to be dropping a lot of exclusive content for y'all so if one episode a week is not enough y'all about to get some more content on patreon yes y'all be saying oh make the episodes longer i need twice a week well this is your opportunity to see us twice a week and also you kind of get you're gonna get a look into our lives mm-hmm. and know us on a personal level mm-hmm. so make sure y'all sign up at patreon.com backslash Poor Minds, sign up today. There's different tiers. So if you want audio only, you can just listen. If you want video and audio, we have that too. And also, we have a top, top tier where you get exclusive access to merch, shows, all that good Mm -hmm. stuff. So go to patreon.com backslash Poor Minds and sign up today. What's up, y'all? It's your girl, XP. And it's your girl, Dre Nicole. And we are here to talk to y'all about GoodDaySense.com. Yes, I love me a good candle. And Good Day Sense candles smell so good. And they're soy-based candles. My fave. So there's Delicious. nothing better than getting your house super clean, mm-hmm. mopping, sweeping, all that good stuff, and lighting a candle. And let me tell you, my favorite scent is Black Love. I like to manifest that in the air because that's what I want. Yeah. And so, it what, is vanilla. You, I feel like you can never go wrong with the vanilla candle. I mean, it's fall time. That's the kind of sense we need. So also, you can use code P O U R. That's poor and get 25% off of your order. So go to gooddaysense.com and get your candle and use our discount code and have your house smelling good. Heartbreak Hotel. This is the Heartbreak Hotel. This is the Heartbreak Hotel. This is the Heartbreak Hotel. Heartbreak. I got a channel my inner with me. Tell this is the heartbreak. Hope. This is the heartbreak. Yeah. Hope. Tell this is the heartbreak. Hope. Tell. You said you'd be here by nine. Instead, you took your time. Mm. You didn't think to call me, boy. Ooh. Here I sit, trying not to cry, asking myself why Mm. you do this to me, you baby. Since you're not around for me to tell you, baby, face to face, Uh. I'm writing you this letter, and this is what I have to say. Some of your time instead, you told me lies when someone else was on your mind. What'd you do to me? Why'd you do it? Look what you did to me. You better sing. I thought that you were someone who would do me right. I said you play with my emotions and you made me cry. What'd you do to me? Can't take what you did to me. Ooh, you now get... I see Ooh. you've been doing wrong. Come on. Played me all along. Oh, so and made a fool of me, baby. Say it, girl. You got it all wrong to think that I wouldn't find out that you were cheating on me, baby. How could you do it to me? Ooh. I got you. Since you're not around for me to tell you, baby, face to face. Yeah. I'm writing you this letter, and this is what, what I have to say. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Period. Shout out to Whitney Houston. R.I.P. Yeah. to our girl, Pearl. <laughs> Why it's you do it? Me, baby. Can't believe what you did to me. Yeah. <laughs> Until 
you made me. I was 21, 20 years old, right? Yeah. So for me, with that kind of money, still living in the projects, we had to figure it out. Like, and I'm not speaking for every man in the, in the If I make it to be making 200 million, nigga, I can make 200,000. I feel like I spoke to fuck any bitch I want. So if Zion, if you want to do that, live your life. That nigga from South Carolina. I look like being faithful to a porn That's star. That's what I said. Ugly nigga from South Carolina, you better get it in while you can. <laughs> Ain't no way in the hell I let this shit dry. What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Lex P. And it's your girl, Dre Nicole. And you are tuned in to another episode <laughs> where a drunk mind speaks. Show these niggas a trick. Now, they my house. I done took y'all everywhere. Now, come on over. All them vines and shit. Mold days and shit. Welcome to the pizza ad. What oh, we yeah. got right here? This granddaddy, man. This come uh, on. This what I got for my 40th. I ain't do nothing to it. Usually, I put 40s on everything I got. Um, I ain't do nothing to this, but put some music in there, you know what I'm saying? It come from uh, Napa Valley. The dude sent me pictures of B.B. King and this motherfucking everything, man. So it's Word? like, yeah. So Did you do the do on it? He did a booty cat. Did you yes, do sir. Do? Woo, you, you was hitting on that joint? <laughs> yeah, 100%. Give him a booty eight all that. Yeah. Yeah. God damn, okay. That's living the life. When you, when you on the, hold on, when you stand on a blow up mattress and you can get a girl lick your ass, eat your ass, yeah. you a bad, you cold blooded. Hey, Shit, nigga be broken in bitch, man. Think about it. You ever been so broke you just feel like you about to pass away sometime soon? <laughs> you be like, I know God ain't got me out here living like this. A Barry a native, you understand me? You got this, you gotta get this monkey off your back, you understand me? <laughs> if you ain't never broke a female off no chicken. <laughs> now it's nothing that you know men should glorify and be proud of, but you know, it's just culture. Right. You know, LA, they got gang culture. Right. Mm -hmm. We definitely Atlanta, have our you know, own culture. Mm -hmm. Right. Bay Area, we got this pimping culture. culture. <laughs> yeah.